We've just gotten back, I say we, um, so much, about 14 uh, 5F family members here traveled to the Philippines with me, and 15, I think. And so we just got back, I just got back yesterday from the Philippines where we saw God move in power like never before. I am still in awe, in shock of what Jesus has done. Jesus filled an arena with about 8,000 people. Yes, people who are hungry for Jesus who are in hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have a picture. You want to show the picture? Hallelujah, hallelujah. 8,000 hungry children of God with pure open hearts for God to have his way in one accord, just wanting God to have his way and his will to be done and for him to move in power. And people came from about 15 different nations. And we saw Jesus move in a way we haven't seen before. I mean, his power came and touched thousands from all over the arena, front to back. I would look up high up high in those higher tiers, and you would hear demons shriek out of people, you would see people fall down, you would see one manifest and being carried to the other tier by Steve and others I saw, you'll see a clip of that in a second. And Jesus touched people in power everywhere, bringing healing and freedom, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, impartation, there have been so many testimonies that have been shared, and I want to share with you a video of what God has done. So let's watch this right now. Eight years ago to this day, I was currently pursuing being a Christian pop EDM singer songwriter. I thought that was God's call for my life. And I went to a conference, a prophetic healing conference, and there prophet Dr. Jordavi was ministering. That is where I saw him for the first time, saw him minister for the first time. And when I saw him minister, I was left in awe by the power of God that was moving through him. I had never seen God move like that in my life. Soon after, he prophesied to me that God was calling me to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he was calling me to reach the nations. And he saw me walking in, in big miracles and I responded to that call because I knew it was truly a true prophet of God and God was speaking through him. So I laid aside my music dreams and I said, yes, Lord. It became God's will for him to be my spiritual father. And I have received this precious anointing through impartation through my spiritual father, prophet Dr. Dordavi. I want to anoint her once again. I want to anoint her for another, for another time. Kwa, kwa for a new level. This is a complete new level. Hii ni atua nyingine mpya kabisa. Of the power and the anointing. Ya nguvu na upako. Of God. Upako wa mungu that things will grow greatly from today in your life. I release the power to change environment, to change anything in people's life. Receive it in Jesus' name. It is yours. 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 In Jesus' name. That things will never look the same. Things will never look the same. You're going to change and affect more and more people in this spiritual uh, in this prophetic life. I have been equipped 
God has spoken through him, guiding me, directing me, releasing wisdom, correcting me, encouraging me, and the anointing I started to see work through my life until until 2021, deliverance started breaking out at my church. And at that time, we were outside and there was just 20 people or so. And all of a sudden, a demon manifested and was cast out of a woman. She was set free. From there, this deliverance revival broke out across the world. I say to Jesus, thank you, Lord, for these promises, these prophecies coming to pass. I say to you, this prophecy has come to pass, and I thank God for true prophets. We need prophets in the body of Christ. I don't know where I would be. We would not all be here if it wasn't for true prophets, it wasn't, if it wasn't for prophet Dr. George Davey prophesying and equipping me and releasing this anointing upon my life. So God can use me and I can be who I was called to be. On this very special day, eight years later, that I first saw prophet Dr. George Davey minister, I am so humbled, honored, and overjoyed to share with you all that Prophet Dr. George Davey is in our midst here today. <laughs> Can you honor him? Can you give him honor? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. I've I've been so humbled and in awe to see thousands, millions encounter the power of God, be delivered, be healed, such as the testimonies we heard through the screens, in person, more than 100 nations of people touched. And that could not have happened without your obedience to God. That could not have happened just as Elisha needed Elijah to receive that anointing, that prophetic direction, that spiritual fatherhood, I needed you. You are such a gift to the world, to the body of Christ. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is truly now. Revival is 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 now. Philippines. There will be a shift in the whole world in this revival because of what happens here tonight. This is gonna be the most life-changing day I believe for your entire lives because it's the day you're commissioned to be anointed vessels of God that will carry this revival, that will lead to revival spreading like wildfire all through this city, nation, and Asia. It's Jesus that does every miracle. It's not a person. It's not a one-on-one -on -one prayer. It's not a method, a technique, a touch. It's Jesus. Do you know how powerful Jesus is? Jesus has planned to come and touch you wherever you are. He's omnipotent. He can be in a million places at one time. It's like he's gonna come individually to every single one of you at one time. He's here right now. He's ready to come and touch you right now. The more hungry you are, the more God can move. And God's about to move like never before. is alive now. God's true anointing is here now. I declare by Jesus Christ, you are healed. Now. 
see someone being healed of an itching problem. Their body's always itching. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Nag-reveal si Apostol. Ano, di ba sabi niya, ano? The all itching will be put out. Ano? Tapos gulat ako yung nangangati ako dati. Nung pagkalabas ko na arena, nawala. When Apostle Catherine Crick uh, go into stage, I was like shaking, like want to cry, shaking. That's how I feel most of the time while she was talking, she was preaching. And then when I got a chance to go in front, like I was shouting, like there's inside of me that there is angriness inside of me the way I shout. I feel so relieved, I feel so free. Thank you, Jesus. I just focus on God and I just ask, Lord, I just want to be free. I just want your spirit upon me and do whatever you want in me. I suddenly shaking my hands and then I started uh, speaking of tongues out loud. It was the first time to see myself speaking out loud in tongues. The very out loud, I, it's very first time and it's amazing. It's very full of peace and joy inside. Something inside of me like gets healed it, it's getting healed and feeling free i feel free and right now i feel so light god is pouring out his spirit right now thank you jesus thank you jesus give god a big breath God is ready to move in this nation, in Asia. He is ready to bring this revival. This is the power of God that no one could ever comprehend. He is ready to move in power through you. The harvest is ripe. The timing is ripe. Jesus! Jesus! Jesus. Revival is now indeed Philippines. Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah! Let's give God a big praise for what He has done! Hallelujah! 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 Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, this is our God, this is our Jesus, this is our miracle working God, this is our promise keeping God, this is our God who makes the walls come down, this is our victory. Jesus, Jesus, how amazing is our Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. I want to share a couple more testimonies from the many, many that have been pouring in. I'm just going to read some of them to you right now. I know Jesus has done thousands upon thousands of miracles. As you can see how he touched the people all over the place, amen? 
Here are some of them. This is one says it was almost the end of the event when apostle ministered to everybody after the one-on-one -on -one deliverance, but every, every kind of oppression has been said. But man, my body shook uncontrollably like a severe seizure when Apostle Catherine mentioned about marriage and divorce, which is what I battled with in the past year. And even if I had already was already forgiven, I know there is still something lingering. And God delivered me through the screen. This is from somebody watching online. I never had this physical shaking. It was so strong. I would have fallen on the floor if I wasn't sitting down. I've encountered him before by just being aware of his presence and the revelations he gives, but it's tangible this time. I was sad about not being able to come in person, but I'm so happy. We have an omnipresent God. He is everywhere and will touch any, anyone anywhere. Just increase your faith. Hallelujah. So everybody watching online, you hear that. You hear that. This is our, how powerful our God is. I've, this is another one. I've been to so many healing and deliverance conferences. All of them were anointed, but last night was special and different. I have never felt such strong anointing before in the tangible glory of God. Wow. Jesus, I was seated far from the stage, but the presence and power of God was so strong. I was literally shaking, weeping, and burning with God's consuming fire. His glory will make you get you down on your knees and fall prostrate before the Lord. So many people renounced sin, generational curses, and surrendered their lives to Jesus. People were freed from demonic oppression and torment, and God was glorified. Hallelujah! I was delivered, this is another one, I was delivered from spiritual spouse, poverty, witchcraft during the mass deliverance, and many other ungodly spirits left me as I spit, yawn, shaking, tears, and mucus came out from my nose. Hallelujah, just after the revival of my son, who happened to be rebellious and not having contact with us, suddenly called me, and he said that he misses us and loves us. Hallelujah. This is another one. My husband told me that after that night, he is now delivered from the spirit of addiction. He was addicted from smoking for 12 years. Praise God. I haven't slept well at night or been able to take a daytime nap for the last four years. I would feel exhausted and drowsy at school or work, especially when I'm being productive, when I would try to sleep or take a nap. I would be feeling completely awake, laying down. It was complete torment. But after receiving deliverance, I can feel sleepy and fall asleep quickly. I can now sleep deeply and wake up with strength and mental clarity. I feel very motivated and joyful since I was able to concentrate and be productive for longer hours than before. I'm amazed. I can now take a nap and sleep during the day. I'm so grateful for the first time in years I can feel refreshed of having full sleep thank you Jesus hallelujah praise God these are these are just a glimpse of what God did how amazing is he in all of these testimonies I think were not even one-on-one -on -one prayer there were just people either watching online or there in person sitting all over the arena hallelujah I want to invite now to the stage Steve and Shane and Juan and uh, Destiny. And first, and, and first of all, um, we have a couple members of the worship team here. Can the rest of the worship team just stand? Can you give them honor? They, you did so incredible. And John Tall, she's somewhere. You can have a seat. I am so proud of the worship team. I am so proud of all of you. I was, as we were worshiping, I was looking at all of you and I was remembering um, how far you have come, how far we have come. And I know that it was probably most of the whole worship team until like seven-ish, eight-ish months ago had never played in a band before. Is that right? Weston didn't learn the bass until learning it to be in the band in February. And now he's playing amazingly. Christine, I don't think, had played in a band until a, a year ago or so. And you've improved so, so amazingly. You sound incredible. Tia picked up the drums less than a year ago. She started playing drums. I don't know, I could be wrong, but Chi Solom and Shane, I don't know if you've ever sang solo before. Not really? No. And you sound so anointed and powerful. Steve, you've, you, you're playing the guitar so amazingly, you've 
you can see your hard work. You've just improved so much and you sound so great. I am so, I, they did so incredibly. I'm so proud of them. In this big arena, you would never know that most of them just started to play their instruments or in a band in less than a year. It was shocking. Only God. And thanks also to your obedience and hard work and excellence. I also want to just honor everyone who came and served, traveled so far, and served with excellence. Every one of you who served, from the, the catching people and the grabbing people, <laughs> carrying them to the, the, the screen and all of the graphics and everything, all of the logistical things matter because if we don't do the logistical things with excellence, it becomes a distraction. But when everything is done in the work of God, including logistical things, then God can have all the glory and God can do the most and nobody will be distracted, but they can focus on receiving. Amen? So I want to thank all of you who traveled from 5F in LA. I think it was like 15 or so. And all of you in the Philippines, we had 5F Philippines family who did so much to prepare for this event. It's an arena event. That's a big kind of event. I mean, that's a big, big ordeal to plan. And it just went so smoothly for the glory of God. And um, Nikki, one of our 5F family members, did so much to contribute to the work of God, to, to contribute to the work of God to go forth in the Philippines and helping to plan it and organize so much. So I just want to thank and honor all of you who served, who contributed. The event was free. And if it wasn't, there would have been a lot of people who couldn't have come due to, due to not having the finances. And to do an event in an arena is not cheap. So thank you so much to all of you. You know who you are who've contributed to 5F Church, who contributed specifically to this event so that 8,000 people could come and receive. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much on behalf of God's kingdom government. Now, I just want to, I wanted to hear from you all. I wanted everyone to hear from you all just to share your testimony of being there, what you saw God do, what you experienced just being there in person. Uh, First of all, I remember I saw you carrying the, a, woman, uh, a person down from one of the higher tiers. Yeah, she, she, uh, it was a, she I mean, she might have been like 12 years old, and um, that was incredible. I was just at the right place at the right time. I actually went over there to try to tell somebody else that was like manifesting. He was manifesting, he was moving around and I was gonna go try to help him in some way. And, and then after I spoke with somebody that was next to him, uh, they just brought me this little girl that was just totally limp. Like, and so, yeah, she just, boop, went right down in my arms. and. And I was like, praise God, I'm just going to take her to the stage. And, um, and, and Juan, Juan helped me out. I was like telling Juan, hey, hey, you know, get me. <laughs> I need to get her to the stage. So he helped me out. But uh, one of the big things that just blew me away was um, when you started to minister, about the time you started to minister, uh, I saw, I, lo I looked up into the like second balcony and I, I saw a woman like fall back and then, there was another man that was next to her, and, and he just started, you know, shaking and kind of receiving anoint the anointing was falling upon him. And so I just started to continue to look around, and, and yeah, I was just blown away that, that the anointing was just touching people so strongly up, up you know, very far from the stage. And I, I don't think I've, I haven't really seen that going to other, you know, events, Flourish conferences, Rivals Now events. That just really blew me away. I was just so blown away, and 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 people were just uh, they were so hungry. Their eyes were upon Jesus. They 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 weren't looking for necessarily one on one prayer. They just they were just all. I mean, people would be on their knees on the floor, uh, you know, near the stage, and and they were just crying and weeping, and just you know, you could see the anointing of God just touching them, filling them with the Holy Spirit. Uh, they were speaking in tongues, and and it just it was incredible. They were just such a pure hearted people so open-minded 
to just receive from Jesus however he wanted to touch them. It's incredible. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing. Shane. I honor you, Mama. Thank you for everything that you do for this ministry, for us, for your sheep. And I love you so much, and I'm so honored to be part of this ministry. Um, but, yes, this event was the best day of my life. It was a transformative day. I never experienced such power and such hunger before in the crowd. Uh, the people there were just looking at Jesus and were so hungry, and the crowd was amazing. Uh, it's truly a promise fulfilled. 8,000 people, all glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And um, it was just the best thing. I mean, like having Prophet Joy Davy there was so incredible. The anointing was so tangible, so strong. It was almost like Flourish LA where I felt like something significant happened in the spiritual realm. Like I felt marked and different. And again, I honor you, Mama. Thank you so much. Glory to God. <laughs> Destiny. Hi, I honor you and I love you. Um, so I was in the, like, the second, um, what is it called? The pew? Yeah, the balcony, yeah. And so I was, like, going up and down the the stairs just trying to get every section to see, like, you know, how people are. And usually, like, during the Flourish conferences and stuff, like, people in the back, they're kind of just, like, like just, sit, just sitting there. But this time it was, like, it was so different. They have, like, a supernatural understanding of that, like, it wasn't one-on-one -on -one prayer. It was keeping your eyes focused on Jesus and so you could see like when you walk down you're seeing people like fall out in the chairs you're seeing people weeping and then you, you walk back up there's something different on this side and you look uh, like to your left there's people falling out you look to your right there's other people like falling out and weeping and screaming in tongues like they weren't just speaking it they were screaming in tongues just shaking and just like oh it's like oh my gosh and I just remember being up there and I just took a minute and I just looked around and I was like like, I, like, there was nothing that I could say to, like, make it make sense. I was just like, this is just all God. It's just all God. So I'm, like, running down all the way down to the floor. And so I'm, like, walking, um, like, where, kind of, like, where you were, like, in the front. And so I'm standing there, and this man, like, the, he falls back. It's the guy in the black shirt, and his hands are up. And then the girl falls down, and then the, uh, the next guy falls down, and then the woman falls down, and then a the woman behind me falls down. It was, it was awesome. So I'm just standing there. So when I get there, you know, everybody's up, and they're praying, they're praising the Lord. And by the time I left, there was about six people on the floor, and I was like, Jesus, like, even when I look back at the videos, I'm like, I'm speechless. There's nothing that could, there's just not, all I can say is Jesus. Because if you say it's amazing, it's an understatement. If you say it's phenomenal, it's an understatement. If you say anything else, it's an understatement. That's not what it was. It was Jesus. It was all Jesus. It was amazing. And like that moment really like, it just helped me like understand like where I'm at and and my focus was just revival, 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 revival army. Like, this is the place I need to be. This is my purpose. And I, I left saying, like, I don't even want to go back to school. Like, this is what I want to do every day. Like, I want to do this every day. Like, I would rather be in no other place than serving you, Mama, and serving this revival army. Like, this is the place to be. This is where I want to be. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. More than phenomenal, more than amazing, more than extraordinary, more than incredible. Jesus! Yes! Hallelujah! You can come here, Juan. First of all, I want to give the glory to you, Jesus. Thank you for giving me the chance to go to serve in the Philippines. That was the greatest honor I ever had in, in my life, to be there. See the promise fulfilled after eight years. This time I'm going <laughs> to um, my heart was uh, in immense happiness the whole time. So I was so touched by the hunger and faith for the Lord of the Filipino people. How kind, respectful, and hardworking they are. And all the love we receive from all of them. We really received love since the line, cruising around all over in the whole country, even a day before. Somebody at the mall recognized us and wel welcomed us. You see the shirt of Revival is now, right, Clarissa? <laughs> so, um, you know, the best part was seeing many people in masses 
being delivered and healed and touched by the love and power of God through his anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. <laughs> then it really was a surprise and a great honor to see a true prophet, true prophet and general of God, Dr. George David. It, it, it was a really honor to see him just right there. <laughs> He's the most humble man I ever seen in my life. I could sense that. I saw tears coming down his che his cheeks. She's that. This part, cheeks. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so it really touched my heart seeing that. And I saw a man, you know, walking by, and he has the courage to, um, you know, to 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 say hi to him, and he extend his hand, right? And I know he received, according to his faith, you know, from a true prophet of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then um, what, I personal, what, I pers what I personally, what I received was more reverence and fear of the Lord in a higher level. After seeing that many people hunger and see the power of God, especially when Apostle Catherine realized the, the, the anointing, the the Holy Spirit in fire was uh, epic. That, that was so powerful. <laughs> and then, um, uh, let's see, let's see. So, so uncertainty, um, my heart um, at higher level, and uncertainty in my heart that I, I know that revival, the wave and the shaking of the Lord will do will cause more and more arenas and stadiums to be filled with the people hungry and desperate for the love and power of God through his anointed trusting in Apostle Catherine. <laughs> and lastly, I love serving at the book signing. What experience. <laughs> I never see a line that long, but it was precious to see all the people face by face and feeling their hearts so exciting to see and feel um, the anointing and, you know, the happiness, the joy in their heart. So it was so beautiful to be serving there. So all the glory to you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you all for sharing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. And imagine it's just the beginning. I don't know if some of you remember what I shared, it was February of this year, I shared that it was time to exit the roundabout and exit onto the revival wave highway. According to the scripture, revelation of the scripture, uh, where God is speaking to the Israelites. Uh, and he's saying, you've been in the wilderness long enough. You've been wandering, going around in a circle around the same mountain for long enough. It is now time to turn northward. And so the prophetic revelation of that, the prophetic word in February that I shared in this year of catching the wave of revival is that it is time in the revival to, to, to not be going in circles anymore. Meaning any area of stagnancy in the revival, any area of being constantly held back by the spirit of religion, by old wine, by attacks of the devil moving through people, this kind of stagnancy being held back, going around in circles is ending now. It's time now to exit the roundabout and go on to the revival wave highway at a supersonic speed to enter the promised land because we had not entered the promised land yet. The promised land is, is looking like way more people being able to receive this anointing. It was like a glimpse, it's been like a glimpse of the promised land or, or a step into the promised land. But so I shared that day that it's like, we've only it's like we've only seen 1% of the revival of what God has in store, even just in our lifetime, let alone what he'll continue to do after our generation. And at that point, you know, it, it, it felt like we were far away from seeing God fill an arena of people who were hungry for him 
and him touching them in power. And now just months later, look what God has done. So you see what I mean now about how there's so much more that God has in store. We haven't seen hardly anything yet. His plans are so massive. This is a true word of God that revival is now. The greatest revival ever, the end time revival, global revival. Not just a revival for one church, one ministry, not just a revival for the charismatic crowd or something, but a true revival for the whole body of Christ, for the whole world. A revival that will break, break the bondage of the spirit of religion. And these people who've been stuck in dry churches in religion, their eyes will open up, they will be set free, and they will come into this revival. So when we say revival is now, that's what we mean. We don't mean, it does not mean like just for our church or just who wants to come to a revival event. It's massive. It's for the whole body. It's the transformation and, and purification of the bride that God is doing before the return of Jesus. And it was so, <laughs> there's so many prophetic signs that God did. You know, the arena, the, it was in the Mall of Asia arena. And um, there was a, 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 a like video billboard type thing, huge video billboard on the outside of the arena. And it was playing uh, videos of people being touched by God's power around the world that flourishes in different revival events and at 5F. And it says, revival is now, Philippines. So that was playing for a while every day, hugely. One time I was driving and I didn't know like my whereabouts. It was like the first day there. And I'm looking down. I just look up out the window and revival is now. It's just playing there, just right out the window. And wouldn't you know that the arena is here, and before the arena, there's a roundabout. And so you have to exit the roundabout to, to enter the arena. And so we exited the roundabout spiritually and physically and entered the Revival Wave Highway in that arena, which has changed the whole body of Christ, the whole world, what God did. There has been a shift a great shaking. It is m truly monumental what God did. We will see many changes. We will see many doors open. We will see many more hearts start to believe, start to be more open to receive and come and be a part of this revival. It's time for this revival to grow to new levels and new heights. This is this is the, the time of a new beginning, the season of new beginning, new beginning of revival expanding like never before, reaching more people than ever before with the, the limits of religion not holding us back anymore because God's will has to be done. Yeah, religion can seem powerful, but guess what? It's not as powerful as Jesus. Whatever the schemes of the devil are, his lies, his false accusations, his rigid spirit of religion that's been here for generations, it's no match for our Jesus. It's no match for our Jesus. Jesus will do what he needs to do to accomplish his plans. He will do miracle upon miracle. He's a God of miracles. So we don't ask how. We say God will do it. How? His miracles. That's how. How? It won't be logical. It'll be his miracles. That's how. <laughs> it won't make sense. It'll confound our minds. It'll confound wisdom of man. He's going to keep, th th this whole story of revival happening and of revival breaking out has been nothing but God's miracles. And it's going to keep on going forth with his miracle after miracle. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So today we are celebrating the fulfillment of the promise. As I shared, you know, last week, 
in the, during the message was I shared about how the prophetic word that we are in a new beginning and new level of the revival, a season of new beginning. And eight in, biblically is the number of new beginning. And it was eight years ago to the day on September 18th, September 18th, 2016 is when I first witnessed my spiritual father minister. And it was in LA. God sent him from Tanzania, East Africa to LA to minister at a conference. And that's the first time I saw him minister. I saw God move like never before through him. And shortly after he prophesied to me, my calling to be an apostle of Jesus Christ and the calling to reach the nations. And shortly after he prophesied that revival is now. So eight years ago to the day, God did wonders opened up doors for this event to be on that exact day, which was not planned by me or anybody. It wasn't until after the date was set that I realized the significance of the date. Only God. So 1818, <laughs> there's the number eight in the date, September 18th, on the eight year anniversary, this promise was fulfilled and this new beginning began. New beginning of revival, in great levels, in greater levels. And our God is amazing. He is beyond words. I mean, the number of people he brought was, there's the number again, eight. 8,000 people. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, you know, we saw this promise fulfilled of revival, filling an arena, reaching thousands, many, many thousands. And this prophecy of, of revival growing to fill stadiums and arenas, this had come, I don't know, the, don't remember the exact day this was prophesied to me by my spiritual father, Prophet Joe Davey, but it was soon after, sometime soon after, it was prophesied how big this revival would be. So this is, this is the fulfillment of the promise we are celebrating of, 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 of expanding to an arena full of, full of people who are hungry for Jesus. The great miracle of that is that these people came on their own accord, hungry for Jesus, only wanting Jesus. There was no incentive, no, no one was paid to be there, no one was bribed to be there, no one was, um, you know, forced to come or anything. It was purely for Jesus that they were there. It was purely their precious, humble, open hearts that no matter what they had heard, no matter what kind of exposed videos they had seen, no matter what anybody spoke to them, they were humble and they could see the truth. The pure in heart shall see God, the Bible says. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will, they're blessed because they'll be able to see God. They'll be able to receive from God. So they came there knowing that it was Jesus and they wanted to encounter Jesus. Hallelujah. That's one of the greatest miracles of all miracles and one of the greatest victories because we have seen, I have seen, we have seen the devil try so hard to blind people, to keep people from being pure in heart so therefore they will not see God, therefore they will not come to receive from God and be able to receive from God. We've seen him try so hard. So to see him defeated in 8,000 plus people's lives in one place was amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for that victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to share today, today we are celebrating the fulfillment of this great promise of God. And I want to share how it happened like the factors that made this promise to be fulfilled, how we got here, and encourage you so you can see all of the promises in your life fulfilled by doing these things that I'm going to share today. Amen. So Amos 3, 7, it says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his, secret to his servants, the prophets. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So what God did this past week 
that was revealed first to a prophet, to a true prophet, my now spiritual father, Prophet Joe Davy. And he revealed that secret to him. He revealed that plan of his that he wanted to accomplish eight years later. And all that he would do before the eight years and after the eight years in this revival. And so this was prophesied. This was prophesied. What God did in that arena, what God has done in your lives, what God has done here at Fivefold Church, all of that came first from God speaking to his prophet. That prophet prophesied it to me. He prophesied my calling to me. There's no way in a million years I would ever be standing here preaching to you, being a minister, if it wasn't for the prophecy that was prophesied to me, me knowing that it was God speaking, because the pure in heart shall see God. So if you're, and I thank God for the grace that I was able to be pure and humble in that moment instead of skeptical. And that, I have to give honor to my parents for that because God's, God's plans are so perfect. Because if I was, if I had such an upbringing that was religious and skeptical and judgmental, that I believe would have shaped me and made it harder for me. Not, not that I couldn't change. No, we can all, God can do anything. But for me, just being a baby, I mean, I was a Christian my whole life, but a baby in terms of surrender, a baby in terms of knowing about the power of God and that prophets exist, I was a baby and I could receive it. And I thank God for what he did, such as one of the biggest things is uh, giving me the parents he did, who never spoke bad about anybody, who never were critical, skeptical, judgmental, who always had an open heart. And I saw nothing but fruit from that. I never saw, you know, them be deceived or something because of that. I only saw fruit from their heart being pure and humble. So that taught me that that's the right way to be. So by God's grace, when I first saw this prophet ministering and when he prophesied to me, by God's grace, I had zero skepticism. I didn't have that verse, well, I must be aware of false prophets. Is this a true or false prophet? You know, many people, they read the verse, beware of false prophets, and they take the Pharisee revelation from it. Because remember, the Pharisees had a different revelation of the whole word of God than Jesus did. Their revelation was wrong. Their revelation was rooted in religion, in pride, in judgment, and tradition. But the revelation from Jesus was rooted in the pure Holy Spirit speaking, was rooted in the love of God, in purity, in humility, the opposite. Those are two different, those are two completely different revelations, right? And so the scripture that says beware of false prophets is not, this is a wrong revelation to think that we're always supposed to be, whenever you hear the word prophet, you're immediately like, well, is it false or true? That's, that, that, that's the kind of Pharisee revelation that the devil wants people to have because that's actually looking for the bad in, pers- in a person rather than the good. It's like saying there's a 50 50- percent chance that this person could be false or true which one are you how would you like it if people looked at you that way when 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 you smile at somebody someone someone looks at you like this and even says out loud is that smile genuine are you trying to get something from me that's what it's like but when people smile smile at you when they treat you kindly Probably most of you, most of the time, are, are thinking it's genuine, right? Yeah, so it says in Ephesians 4, 11, that God gave to the body of Christ gifts, and these gifts were apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These, are, get, these gifts are to equip the body of Christ to keep you from being deceived by the devil, to Make sure you can grow up to be strong and mature and victorious over the devil. That's a summary of Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And so these are gifts. So when you hear the word prophet, you should be thinking gift. And the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. 
but you're supposed to, just like how you interact with anybody in real life, you don't first look with skepticism. You look with an open heart and you're just, you, you have wisdom. You're innocent as a dove and wise as a serpent. So you have your eyes open to, to, be, to see bad fruits if they come up, but you're not looking for bad fruits, right? And if we operate that way, if we're constantly focusing on the negative and looking at the negative, whether it's for people in life or you yourself, guess what? The devil's going to use that and start speaking negative things that aren't true, right? If you start looking at yourself with a critical eye, yourself, from physical to inwardly, you're going to start thinking negative things that aren't even true, right? So that's why it's important that we come with an open, pure heart, not looking for the bad. When it comes to the fivefold ministry, when you hear someone's an apostle, a prophet, you're not supposed to assume they're false. You're supposed to be aware. Let God show you bad fruits if they're there, but don't look for them like you're being skeptical. Amen? And so I thank God that I was prepared to not have any of that skepticism in me. So the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So I was pure in heart that day, eight years ago, and I saw God move through my spiritual father, through that prophet. And then shortly after, when he prophesied to me, I knew it was God speaking. It's something supernatural I can't explain to you other than my spirit man knew he was a true prophet. And I knew that God was speaking through him. I didn't have this wild experience where I fell out when I received the prophecy, where I started seeing angels singing, where I started to see a great light. And after I received the prophecy, I didn't start walking on air. I wasn't shaking in the car. I didn't have these wild dreams that night. None of that. It was very simple like Mary receiving the word from the angel. Very simple. I just received the word and I knew it was God. And I knew that there was nothing I wanted more than to be in God's will, to please God, to be obedient to him. So therefore, I knew I had to obey. That was it. And so I obeyed. And that was it. That was it. And I just kept, I just knew, there's never a doubt in my mind from that moment that this was a true prophet of God, that this word of God was true. It didn't make sense. Public speaking was my biggest fear and weakness. I had no idea how on earth I was going to be able to minister to people, and I had only seen one or a couple people walk in God's power. So it was really shocking to imagine that I'm called to walk in miracles. I didn't know how this could be possible. I never even heard of a woman pastor leading a church or a woman apostle, or very hardly any apostles. So I had no idea how on earth any of this was going to happen. But thanks to the grace of God, for the purity of heart, I could see God, know it was God, trust God, and just rest. That's the simple summary of how we got here. Simple. What I'm talking to you about today is God's ways. God's main way of speaking is through vessels. Especially when it comes to directional words. When it comes to directional words for the body of Christ, such as revival is now. Not just like a little nice revival event that will last for a couple months or something. But like real revival. End time revival. When God wants to bring revival, he will speak that secret to his servant, to his prophet. And the prophet will then speak it. And the body of Christ is supposed to humbly accept and receive that word. Not act like they are prophets themselves. That's prideful. Well, you know, when I received that prophecy, I didn't go home and pray about it. God had already spoken. That would have been foolish. God had already spoken. I knew God had already spoken. I didn't need God to speak it again. And it's more respectful to God to, to hear his word how he wants to speak it. Rather than, Lord, I'll feel like it's more intimate and spiritual if you speak in an audible voice to me or give me a dream. 
repeating what you said through the prophet. So that's how it came. I never had a, a confirmation dream, not saying that God doesn't give confirmation dreams, but I'm just saying my experience, I never even had this like confirmation dream where God spoke in the dream, yes, this is my prophet. Because when you're pure in heart, you can see God. And it's simple. You can see God. You can know when he's speaking. You can know who, our, who his true servants are. You can be confident of that. You don't have to feel so in the dark. I'm not sure. When you're pure in heart, you shall see God, period. Not a glimpse of God. Not part of God. Not God in a hazy uh, sight. In a blurry sight. You shall see God, period. So I saw God. I heard the word. I believed the word. I kept obeying the word. And that's how we got here. Simple. And what I'm sharing with you is God's ways. God's main way of speaking is through prophets. And the body of Christ has lost this for so long. They have lost one of God's main ways of speaking. They become they become blinded and deaf to hear God's voice. And, and, and they've tried to do things their own way. They tried to prophesy themselves. And they're, con they're opening up the door to the angel of light. And everybody's prophesying to everybody. And they're speaking angel of light prophecies. And they're all acting like the same level. We're all prophets. God told me this. God told me this. God told me this. God's saying this for your life. God said, no, it's not a lot of the time. It's, it's, it's the devil moving through this open door of the body of Christ, rejecting God's way of speaking through prophets. Because we all still need to hear God's voice. Every child of God wants to hear God's voice. So when the body of Christ shut the door to God's main way of speaking through servants of God, through prophets, you're going to have a need. People are still going to want to hear God's voice. And so there's that open door for the devil. So this is one of the main ways I will tell you why I can confidently say for eight years I've been able to step in God's will every day. I'm not saying I've been perfect. I've, had to, I've been corrected by my spiritual father. But, but it's like be, because I, I, I humble myself and I allow myself to be corrected, I'm a, I was able to go quickly back in. So not even a day spent outside of God's will. Maybe a second or something or a minute or something or half a day when I made, I made the wrong decision or something. But right back in God's will. So I can say confidently, glory to God, every day through those eight years I've walked in God's will. How? Not for my credit, simply by doing things God's way. God wants us to prosper. God wants us to flourish. God wants us to be in his will every day. But guess what? We have to do it God's ways. We can't do it our own way. We can't say, Lord, I want to be in your will. Guide me today while rejecting God's way of keeping you in his will by speaking through his servants. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established, meaning you shall begin you shall, be, you shall receive salvation. You shall begin your walk in, in eternal life and abundant life. But then there's a second part. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. The revelation I share from this verse that I'll give you is that I believed in God before knowing prophets existed, before receiving the word from a prophet. I believed God and I was established and I loved Jesus and I had a relationship with Jesus and I was saved. But I wasn't flourishing. I wasn't prospering. I wasn't walking in abundant life. I didn't know how to accurately discern God's voice and walk in true wisdom. I wasn't walking in my calling. I was searching for years and years trying to find my purpose here, there, everywhere. And looking back, I see I was deceived by the angel of light because I didn't have this wisdom. I wasn't flourishing in the area of wisdom. But then when God spoke through a prophet, and I believed in the prophet, that he was a true prophet, and I believed the prophet's words, guess what happened to my life immediately? I began to prosper. I began to flourish. And so for these eight years, ever since I believed in this prophet, 
I have truly prospered and flourished every day. Even in those valleys, I was prospering and flourishing because I was going through the refining fire that I needed. I couldn't have made it where I am now. We couldn't have experienced what we did in the Philippines if I didn't go through the refining fire in the valleys. So those, those, those valley moments, those refining fire moments, wilderness moments are literally stepping blocks. So it's like you are going glory to glory in the valley when God ordains that valley for your good. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we have it even in the New Testament, New Covenant. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. So this is, I want to remind you, this is New Covenant, okay? Because so often we're going to church, we're going through the motions, and many people are realizing that we're not doing what the Acts Church was doing. <laughs> we veered away from the Acts Church. We veered away from the New Covenant, New Testament. Most people don't even want to acknowledge prophets. They want to call them all false. Or they want to say they don't, they don't, we don't need them today. But this is new covenant. This is Acts Church. It's, it directs us to well, receive a prophet. When you receive a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And to summarize what reward means is what it says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. You'll prosper, you'll flourish. Because God, this is one of God's big ways of speaking is speaking through prophets. So, so much of uh, the key to flourishing and prospering is to hear and obey the word of God that comes forth through his servants, through his prophets. It's not complicated. I can tell you that my journey through these eight years has been so simple, so complicated. So not complicated. So simple. I mean, I've gone through a lot. I've gone through hard things, but I have never spent time like being confused. I've never spent time like doing all these rituals or something to gain favor or gain anointing to conquer the battles or something. It's been so simple. Humble myself. Don't try to do things myself or my own way. Receive prophetic direction, instruction, correction from my spiritual father, from a prophet. Hear the word of the Lord, obey it, carry it out. Keep doing it until we see the fruits. My spiritual father, Prophet Jordavi, he spoke to me one time because he would prophesy things to me throughout. He was helping guide me, guide me, guide this revival. All throughout. It wasn't just one time prophesied this. It was all throughout. It still is. And so he said one time when our church was really, when, when this church was really small, like, because we, we, we were 20 people. We went down to 15. We went down to 10. We went down to 5. We went down to 2 over three and a half years, two being the times of COVID. And um, maybe like two years or so, one and a half to two years into this journey, where our church was small, our church only had like 15 people or so. He prophesied this to me. I'll never forget it. He prophesied this to me. He says, I see how this revival is breaking out. It's going to break out through people seeing one minute videos. So you need to put out one minute videos. And at that time, I don't know if I put out a single video. I was, I was, I, 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 I mean, we didn't have a team. I didn't know how to edit. I had taught myself how to edit one time, like a simple iMovie thing. But no, like, short clips, no preaching clips, nothing. So I knew I must do what this prophet has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. And I also knew the principles of God that we're not, when, when the word of God comes forth, you got to just do it. You, you got you to gotta use what's in your hand. As God spoke to Moses, what's in your hand not say, how can I do this, Lord? Send people to edit the videos for me. You can pray for God to send editors. You can pray for a team, but you're not to wait until they come to put out the videos. Put out the videos even if they're not very good, <laughs> you know, professional. Use what's in your hand, and as you obey, then he'll bring the team, the, the, the more 
excellent team. And that's what I've seen happen. So I taught myself how to edit and I would spend many hours per day editing. I immediately obeyed that word and I start putting the, put the, putting the videos out, putting the preaching videos out of around one minute. And I would do that every single week for a few years. I think it was like two and a half years. And guess what? If you can scroll back, if you, it might take you a while, but if you want, you can scroll back at 5F Church's page back to like 2018-ish, 17-ish, 19, and you'll see there's one like. Some might have zero. Some might have one comment. And it was that way for years. Every social media platform, we're talking YouTube. YouTube, my YouTube for the glory of God has 910,000 subscribers. Glory to God. But through those years, it had like 50 maybe, five zero period. For years, I'm putting out these videos and they aren't even increasing in views, but the prophet spoke the word and the word will not fail. And so you have to have that reverence for the word of God that comes forth. You have to have maturity to know how things work in the spiritual realm. It's not like an easy bake oven. Where you put something in and it comes out right away. It's like the principle of sowing. You sow in one season and you reap in another season. So do not expect the harvest to come the day after you planted the seed or the month or even the year after. That's not how things work in the spiritual realm. So you, you, if you want to be victorious over the devil's schemes to discourage you, you got to grow up spiritually and, 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 and accept God's ways of moving <laughs> And, and not doubt when you're not seeing the promise come to pass yet. The word will not fail. That's all you need to know. A true prophet spoke it. It will come to pass. It will. And so it was like two and a half years of seeing hardly any likes or comments, but I just kept putting the videos out. And then um, I w- I, I was headed almost to my, to, for a vacation for my 30th birthday to celebrate my 30th birthday. And I got this vision that the day before I left of putting together a montage, a one minute montage video showing God moving in power that past year at Fivefold Church. Now at that time, we didn't see any deliverance and pretty much hardly any healing. But we would see baptism in the Holy Spirit. We'd see the power of God touch somebody, they'd fall back. We would see God touch people through prophetic anointing, prophetic ministry. So I put a montage video together of showing God moving power. And I felt excitement for it. I felt God's going to do something through this. I feel it. I just knew that vision was from God. And I posted it. I was working hard on the airplane. I'm supposed to be re- <laughs> celebrating and relaxing finally. But I was working hard on the airplane editing this video, working hard that night in the hotel room. And I posted it that, that night. And I wake up to see that video went viral on TikTok. The next day it had, by by my, this was um, New Year's Eve, it went viral. And on my 30th birthday, January 1st, the video had 1 million views. But, and I didn't have a following before that. So it was purely supernatural for this video to go so viral like that. But the real great miracle, greater miracle was that thousands of people, thousands of people commented on that video testifying of so many miracles they received while watching, healing, deliverance, God's power touched atheists. Were, they were testifying they felt power when they watched it. Um, and, 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 and before this, I'd only seen God do one healing miracle through me online, and that was only two months prior. And now it's thousands. To this day, I've never counted. I've never read all of the testimonies because there was thousands. So you see that prophecy came to pass. The prophecy that this revival would break out through a one-minute video. Everything changed from that one-minute video going viral. I started going live twice a week, every week, and every time people are testifying of miracles they're receiving while watching. So, and then because of the, the I, a following came on social media, I got a following now, and the word is spreading about what God's doing. So people start showing up to our revival in the park, our church services, that were out in the park because of COVID times. We had just five people in January there when the video went viral. But people started to trickle in. One, two, three people started trickling in because of seeing what God was doing online. The word started to spread until... People started traveling from the East Coast, May 20th, 
20, uh, sorry, March 21st, um, 2021, a woman traveled from the East Coast and a demon manifested in her, started speaking out of her. I had never seen that happen in my ministry before. And I commanded the demon to go by God's grace and power. The demon left her. Hallelujah. That was the first deliverance. And that video went viral. And the rest is history. Revival hunger just broke out. People started traveling immediately. Two, uh, two months later, 300 people showed up. So from five people in January to 20 people in March, when that deliverance happened to 300 in May. And then it became a global revival where I started ministering at revival events every single week, just a couple months later, going to 14 nations, I think it is now, ever since, just in a few years. Glory to God. But I, I, share, that to, I share that so you can see the, the, how we got here. We got here because I believed in the prophecy spoken through a prophet, and kept carrying out the word, kept doing the word for years. When you're not humble, you'll doubt the prophet. When you're not humble, you'll start to be logical. You'll, when you're not humble, you'll start to walk outside of wisdom and start taking a pull from people, and, and the devil will speak through them, even when they have good hearts. But they don't have wisdom, so the angel of light will speak through them and say, this doesn't make sense, Catherine. You're a really great singer. Your music videos and everything were so amazing. They really were. I was so shocked with the favor, how amazing the music videos and the songs were. I had so much support, friends and family saying, this is what you're called to do. You're going to make it, so many people were saying. I never had friends and family support me like this. But when I started pursuing that music dream before meeting the prophet, they were supporting me like crazy. So if, but you know what? When I knew that God spoke to that prophet, I never asked anyone's opinion. I didn't even ask my parents' opinion. I knew God had spoken, and I knew it would be a, sl a slap in the face to God to doubt his word by asking other people's opinions to make me feel better when I knew he had spoken. And I knew that people are religious and they wouldn't understand. So I knew the devil would use it. I didn't need people's opinions. I didn't need their two cents. I didn't need their, their blessing on me. And that's how I've been able to be strong, to keep going, is protect the prophecy, protect the promise maintaining that fear of God and reverence. I have the fear of God for my spiritual father. I have reverence for him. I never want to disrespect him. I never want to disrespect him by doubting the true words coming forth through his, through his mouth. That's what's helped me stay strong, keep going. I kept renewing my mind. The prophet spoke this word, it will come to pass. I just gotta keep going. So it came to pass, that, one, that was prophesied, that one minute video is how revival is gonna break out. That's exactly what happened. It was a one minute video on TikTok. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, wow, to see to, to have my spiritual father there at that event at Revivals on Philippines was one of the greatest honors of my entire life. I know more than any of you know, more than any of you know, even though I share with you, but only I know deep down in my heart how much he played such a big part in what we experienced in the Philippines and what we experience here at 5F Church and in this revival. I know that it was because of his words he prophesied to me. I know it was because of his encouragement for me when things were really hard. I know it was because of his guidance, his correction, his equipping, his, 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 his teaching me about the things of the spiritual realm, teaching me how demons operate and how to have victory in the spiritual realm so that God's people can be free. Amen. 
So whenever anybody gives me honor, if anyone just like, I like honors me in any way, I can't help but immediately think of, my, my eyes go right to Jesus. My mind goes right to Jesus. Because it's only by his grace and only by his power. Public speaking is my biggest fear and weakness. And now I could be on a stage in front of 8,000 people without a single nerve or butterfly in my stomach. That is supernatural. That is truly supernatural. I was naturally a brave kid, except for when it came to public speaking. There was a class I took in college where I had to give a presentation and I had to speak in front of 10, 10 or 12 people. And I went like, numb in the brain like have you ever experienced that where like it's like you can't talk or think like brain dead blink that's how I would be not one time but all the time whenever I would present to people try to present to people that's only God that he took me from there to here gave me the ability to speak I never experienced God moving in power through me before before, before receiving this prophecy of, over my life. I never heard prophetic things for people's lives. I never prayed for people and saw miracles happen. I think one time I saw one, one, one miracle maybe when I prayed for somebody, just one time. And now look what God is doing for his glory. That's only Jesus. And the only way all of you were here and 8,000 people came to the Philippines is because you, they, want Jesus. They want his power. You are not here to hear me speak like a person speak, to hear a nice sermon. <laughs> you are not here for some good worship songs. You are not here for entertainment, for comedy. You are not here so that you can check off the box on your list of being a good Christian. I know why you're all here. You're here for Jesus. You're, you're here to encounter Jesus. You're here to encounter his power. And so all that happened in the Philippines, all, that happened, all that's happened here is only by God's power. It's only because of God's power. It's not because of anything else. It's not because of any person's greatness, because of my greatness or anything like that, or my great ability to speak or something, great communicator. It's none of that. It's all God's power. It's all his miraculous power that he has done to, to tear down the walls of Jericho. To tear down the walls of religion and old wine that has kept people from receiving this new wine and this anointing. That all of you are here today. Through all of those attacks of the devil, all of those exposed videos and all of that persecution. But look what God has done. All of it has failed. He made the wall to come down. Only God can do that. Only God can make my heart more like his. Only God could give me fruits of the spirit. Give me a heart like his. Only Jesus. So whenever anybody honors me, like says, you're pure in heart, you're humble, you're, you're compassionate, I feel the love of God through you, my eyes just go to God. I just know that it's completely him. It's not something that I conjured up. It's not something that I was born with. It is only Jesus that's done this. My eyes go to Jesus and my eyes then go to my spiritual father. Because God's way of moving for the most part is through vessels. And Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And that's the biblical principle of how to become more like Jesus. Of how to be transformed into the image of Jesus. Is to imitate who God is calling you to imitate that person, that servant of God. I have imitated my spiritual father. I am fruit from my spiritual father. How my heart has transformed is by imitating my spiritual father. How I have gone through persecution and stayed strong and kept my mouth shut and bless my enemies and, and been kind to my enemies and loving to my enemies. That was from imitating my spiritual father. 
from imitating his life and hearing what he's gone through in his persecution in the past, that it moved me to tears when he'd tell me about it. And also hearing his direction when I share with him about the persecution I was going through and hearing just his gentleness, you know, the way he was loving to my enemies, although I knew it hurt him, how he was loving to his enemies because so much of the persecution I've gone through, the majority of it, probably the majority of it was connected to my spiritual father. It was persecution against both him and me. So many people would say, oh, you should just disconnect from your spiritual father. So many would say that. And that didn't surprise me because the more you're like Jesus, the more you'll be persecuted. Jesus was the very most persecuted person of all time. So the more we are like Jesus, the more we will be persecuted. He was lied on, falsely accused, all evil things spoken about him. Those, those things are going to happen to those who are like Jesus, no matter what. We, we don't get to skip past that. That will happen. And so it actually makes sense that he was persecuted even more than me or that that was the main reason I was persecuted was because of him. Because he's even more like Jesus than me. Amen. Matthew 5, 11, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is new covenant, Matthew reiterating that God uses prophets today, whether the body of Christ wants to accept them or not, totally. This is God's way that he uses prophets. So it says, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets, specifically the prophets who were before you. Amen. So here's a, here's a secret to how I was able to endure persecution because my spiritual father encouraged me. Because encourage me, you know, it doesn't matter what they say, what they do. God's word will never fail. All that I prophesied to you, it will still come to pass. God's taking you through this to refine you. There's nothing to worry about. He would speak to me with gentleness, with such strength and gentleness and kindness towards my enemies. The way he spoke with kindness towards both of our enemies is what helped me be kind to my enemies is what helped me not to give in to temptation of defending myself. Is just hearing how he would speak to me, how there wasn't this bitterness, hatred, resentment towards both of our enemies when they were saying even more evil things about him than me. The way he spoke said a lot about his heart and about how I was supposed to be. So I imitated him as he imitated Christ. I saw his compassion and heart and love for people. And I prayed to God one day, Lord, I want his heart. The selflessness he has. Complete death to self. Like, this is one thing I learned from him from the beginning. Well, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. All these things, all these desires of your heart, they'll all be added. But we're really supposed to lay down all our desires and revere God's desires so much more. That's what I've learned through him. I, I've seen how the desires we have are so insignificant compared to God's desires. Like when God says, do this, I need you to do this. I need you to, to lay down your desires, your will, your plans, and do this. We should be ready, ready to care. Yes, Lord. Instead of, <laughs> this is hard. Complaining, whining about it, crying. <sighs> okay, Lord.
Because when you do that, then serving God becomes difficult and hard and heavy. It doesn't need to be that way. It just takes humility, reverence, fear of God. I'm calling you, I'm like, like, I had this revelation. God's calling me to do something very huge, very significant. So many people will be healed, delivered, saved, encounter his love if I can just be obedient. God wants to use, because I, re I received this prophecy through my spiritual father. So I understood this. I understood this gravity. And so I, I, the fear of God came upon me from my example through my spiritual father of how insignificant my desires were. How I needed to treat them as that compared to God's desires and not complain to God and just drop them and run. Yes, Lord. I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. Yes, Lord. This is very important what you're calling me to do. Yes, Lord. I, I saw that in him. I saw that in him. I saw that he didn't even baby me. He wasn't like, I know it's so hard to let go of all of these things. And you're so amazing, Apostle Catherine, for, for giving up these things for God. He didn't baby me like that. Like, I just saw the seriousness in him for the work of God. That, 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 that our greatest love should be for God's people. Our greatest love should be serving God's people. That's God's heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so, um, Man, I was, it was, I was so humbled to have my spiritual father there at that event. It was such an honor of my life because I revere him as this great general in the kingdom of God. And I knew who I was before I became his spiritual daughter. I didn't have any anointing in me. And now look what God has done. After I received the impartation through him, I did not have the wisdom I do now until God used him to, to teach me, equip me, open my spiritual eyes. I did not have the love for people, the servant heart I did until before, until I had his example and, and, and how he helped me be more like Jesus. I didn't have the discernment in the spiritual realm, the ability, the, the, the knowledge of how to cast out demons and minister to people in general. Until he equipped me, God used him to equip me and teach me. So to see him there was one of the greatest honors of my life and really humbled me so much. Just to have him there supporting me and celebrating what God has done. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 8, 17. You know, there's a scripture I didn't write, write down, but I wanted to share it with you. So I, I don't have it written down right now, but I just want to summarize the scripture. There's a scripture that talks about when, 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 when someone prophesies and it doesn't happen, you will know they're not a true prophet. So therefore, when a prophet prophesies and something happens, you will know they are a true prophet. So I say to the body of Christ, look for yourself. You shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by the fruits of their prophecies. I don't know if I've seen such fruit of prophecy as this. As what I've shared with you today. I don't know if I've seen anybody prophesy, anyone in our generation, like prophesy this kind of big thing that has indeed happened. 
God has revealed, God has shown. Amen? It says in, in, in Luke 8, 17, there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. In other words, no lies can stand. People can say false prophet about somebody all day, every day. They can make exposed videos with millions of views saying false prophet. But guess what? Their lies will crumble. God will prove himself. He will prove himself through his true servants. He will back up his true servants. He will show the fruit versus the bad fruits. He will show who the real false prophets are. The ones saying that the false prophet that the true prophets are false, the ones saying that they are false. Those are the false ones. I hope the body of Christ, this is one thing I hope, I pray, that through what God has done this week, I really hope the fear of God comes. I pray the fear of God comes. The fear of God to shut your mouth Anyone who, 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 who just speaks false prophet carelessly is as foolish as they come. And it's not something to play around with. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit is not something to play around with. It's not going to get you ahead. You think it's going to get you ahead? You're, 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 you're sowing into the devil's kingdom. There's some people that they serve the devil and the devil gives them rewards. The devil gives them money, fame, success. But the Bible says the blessings of God come without sorrow. So that means that the blessings, which are not really blessings, but the rewards from the devil come with sorrow. What that looks like is that they will not stand. Quick success, it ends. It doesn't last. Or lasting success, but torment with demons every day. Where you would give anything to not have the success so you could be free of demons. And that's what, that's what I, I, I pray the body of Christ realizes. It's not just the people, warlocks, going to the devil saying, I'll serve you devil if you can give me money, fame, success. It's the people allowing themselves to be used for the devil because they have jealousy and envy and they want to speak bad about someone to, to try to take their place or something and compete and gain something, to try to get views and likes and followers by speaking bad on somebody. I pray the fear of God comes upon the body of Christ. It's not worth it. It's not something to play around with. And you that are doing this are literally being used by the devil to keep people from receiving deliverance, healing, salvation. Do you really think it's worth it? Are you really that jealous that you want to play with that? Think twice, body of Christ. Body of Christ in the whole world. Just think twice. I say it with love for you because you reap what you sow. It's not too late to repent. It's not too late to fix your wrongs. It's not too late to apologize. It's not too, la too late to speak the truth and say, I was wrong. These are lies. You'll be forgiven by Jesus. And I forgive you all. And I bless all of you. I bless all of my enemies. I bless all of you who have spoken against me, against my spiritual father. It hurt me deeply. It hurt me to, I didn't mind people speak against me. What really hurt me was to see people speak against my spiritual father. Because I've never seen anyone more like Jesus in my life. And so that hurt me. Just like as you can imagine, the disciples were hurt to see people persecute Jesus. But I bless you and I love you. And I pray for you. I pray that there is change in the body of Christ. That the fear of God would come. 
because of how God has shown himself. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 137, for the word of God will never fail. Isaiah 55, 11, so is the word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. I pray that every one of you experiences more rest in the Lord and has true, like a deeper trust in your heart for God than ever before because of what you've witnessed happen this week. I pray this is a modern day Bible story come alive for you to encourage you that God's words will never fail. That when he speaks, that word will be accomplished. Whatever he purposed it for, it will be accomplished. This, the same is true for your life. Whatever God has spoken to you, whatever he has promised you, it will happen when you do your part in obedience, not giving up, having the fear of God, surrendering, it will happen. The word of God will never fail. Hallelujah. It will never fail. It will never fail. Our God is trustworthy. Our God will always defeat our giants for us. Our God will always bring us victory for his glory. Nothing can stop his plans, his move. All of the prophecies will come to pass. And, and there, are, there are so many more prophecies that my spiritual father, Prophet Jordavi, has prophesied to me. Some that are meant to just keep in my heart for now and not share publicly. But I will share with you as time goes on. Yes, this was prophesied. Yes, this word of God has come to pass. We will see more and more and more of these words of God come to pass. We will see revival grow bigger and bigger and bigger and reach more and more people. And God open up more and more doors so the most amount of people in this world can be reached. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Can we show the picture of the Philippines event? This is harvest. Glory to God. This is harvest. But harvest came from sowing and not giving up. Not sowing one time. Not sowing when it was fun. Sowing every day. Saying revival is now countless times. Showing up to preach, whether it was 20 people or four years later, two people. Or even one time, September, in 2020, 20 in September, it was 100 and something degrees outside. And it was Jean Tal and me and one other person was helping serve. And I was preaching and there was just one person in the amphitheater in the park. And she left in the middle of the message. And I kept preaching and I just turned to the camera, which... At that point, we had less than 20 viewers, maybe 10, 5, I don't know. But I turned to the phone. And it, that was not a fun day. That was not an easy day to sow. There were a lot of days like that. The church getting smaller for three years. While, at the, while, while, you're, while, while, while it's like, it's, imagine like, it was like, imagine a parent saying to their kid, Christmas is coming soon. Christmas is coming soon. And you're going to have all these gifts of everything you ever wanted. And the kid thinks soon is the next day. And so it's constant disappointment when it's like a year later. If they're saying it in January and they're saying Christmas is soon. That's how. So on top of like 
it being hard, you know, it was disappointing, not disappointing in God, but disappointing, disappointed in my own expectations. So seeing the church diminish every year while every day thinking about this, this prophecy. This was the prophecy I was thinking about when our church went from 20 to 15 to 10 to 5 to 2. That day in the amphitheater when there was one person there. I knew this would happen because I believe what the prophet spoke and he spoke that. He spoke this and much more and much more than this. I would think of this every day almost. This, this harvest. That was not easy to sow during those times. When this seemed farther and farther away, when we got smaller and smaller and smaller. But in the word it says, if you do not give up and you keep sowing, you will reap a harvest. Do not get weary for doing good. It's about obeying God and trusting him, trusting him in the process. Trusting him that it's a refining fire you need and it's worth it. <laughs> And it doesn't matter how it feels. All that matters is obeying God and pleasing your father. That's all that matters. And there will be reward. It will be worth it. Hallelujah. So this is, this is the result of sowing every day. Not getting tired of sowing. This is a result of my spiritual father sowing into me pretty much daily for most of those years. Sowing into me, impart, imparting anointing, teaching me, equipping me, maturing me, counseling me, directing me, correcting me, sowing, 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 sowing. So this is a result of him sowing. This is a result of me sowing. This is a result of everybody, such as Chantal, who was with me in the park, singing her, singing her heart out to God when there was just a couple people there in the 100-degree weather with a cart pulling all of the, our equipment, just the two of us, and it falling off the cart as we come down the grassy hill and us piling it back on the cart a couple times sometimes. It's her seeds. And it's all of you who have come and served at 5F. There's people who have started to help edit. I used to spend a few hours per day just editing, just finding which uh, moment, preaching moments to, to, to edit and everything, editing the sermons. I used to spend between two to like seven hours every day editing until just about a year and a half ago. And now there's a team of editors who have taken that burden off me so I'm hardly editing now. And there's, there's some, there's some who are doing it every day. Every day, spending hours every day. And God gave me this picture that they have their own field that they are sowing every day. And they, they, they don't keep their field to themselves. They bring it to the work of God where they are planted. They surrender their fields to be a part of this move of God, to not do their own thing. They surrender their fields. And so it becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger field. So this becomes this bigger and bigger and bigger harvest because of everyone doing their part, sowing, sowing every day, producing a great harvest. Hallelujah. May you be encouraged to sow every day and never give up. To know that there will be a harvest. When you put that seed in the ground, it does not appear as the fruit, as the plant immediately. It will take for another season even. It will take a long time. You won't see anything come from the ground. It's all invisible under the ground that the roots are going down. But one day, one day, the seed will come out of the ground and produce fruit, produce a great harvest that you can see and taste yourself and see that it was all worth it. All of the tireless hours sowing day after day, year after year. There's no seed that dies. I mean, there's no seed that 
it becomes invisible, I mean. I mean, it goes away. As the word will do what it was accomplished to, the seed will do what it was accomplished to, what it was sent to do. The seed will come forth. It will come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise Jesus. So I wanted to share with you some of these these revelations God was giving me of how we got here. You keep the picture up. How we got here. This was not just coincidence. This was not, this was sure not connections from people. This was sure not from people's favor and people opening up doors for me for this ministry. This was by God. God alone. And our partnership with God, our obedience to God. And by the guidance and the impartation and the direction of my spiritual father, Prophet Joe Davy. This is how it happened. And so for all of your lives, this is how it will happen for you. These same principles. Believe in God's true servants, his true prophets, his word coming forth through your spiritual leader. The prophetic word coming forth through your spiritual leader. Just in the teachings even. I'm not just saying a a certain specific prophecy for you like what I was saying for me. I'm talking about every word that's coming forth. Treat it as a true word from God. This is my prophecy. This is my personal prophecy. This is the key to my life. This is how I remain in God's will. By what I receive today. This Sunday. And run with it and carry it out. Carry out that word. Apply that word. Keep sowing. Keep serving. Keep humbling yourself. And this will happen for your life. A harvest of whatever it is will happen in your life. The promises fulfilled will happen in your life. The fruits will come forth in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, we are going to give to God right now, and we're going to give a thanksgiving seed to him, to thank him for what he has done. To th- I want you to give from your heart today just what you have experienced in this ministry, in this anointing. God wants you to give from your heart. A gratitude seed today, a thanksgiving seed today. Give him honor with your seed. Give him reverence with your seed. And with this seed, do your part in contributing to the work of God. I was sharing how, for example, and this is for all of you who serve at 5F Church, but I'm just giving the editing example because there was many hours that now it's, I'm able to do more work of God because the editing was taken off my plate. So imagine, like, I'm able to do, I, I could write a book, I could do an e-course, I could prepare the sermons without stressing because of not enough time and getting enough sleep so I could have more energy <laughs> and, and strength to minister. That can happen because others sowed. Even to be here in this place and for all the events to happen. Do you know who it falls on if there's not enough finances? Me. You know, so, so, so even to not have stress. There were, there, were, there were five of family who donated largely for the Philippines event to happen. And so I, and sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes for the Flourish conferences, I'm, God always provides. But sometimes it has to be on my mind a little bit. Oh, we have to, we have, this is due, this deposit's due, this is due. And it's taking place in my mind because it falls on me as a responsibility. I got to go to the Philippines not thinking about money. Not, not wondering, okay, what, let me check the account today. So I just wanted to say that to you so you can understand the part that you get to play in this revival. You contributing with whatever is in your hand, sewing, serving is a big deal. That picture we see of all those people 
all those people, it's like you're increasing the number of people there with every part that you contribute, with every seed that you sow. It matters. Your part that you play, what you contribute, it's a big deal. So I encourage you going forward today and every day, may you carry more revelation of the power of your seed, the power of your financial seed and the power of your service seed, your, your serving in the work of God. May you step up. Remember this year I'm, I was sharing with you, God wants to go at supersonic speed, but he needs you to join him. I shared that, like how God wants to do many more flourish conferences, but we have to all do our part or he has to slow down. So I say this to you again, let's rise up to God's standards, all of us, amen? He wants to go higher and higher, but he needs your part, you to play your part, amen? Hallelujah. So if you wanna give, you can go to 5upchurch.org slash give or the QR code there as well. And um, those of you watching online, you can go to the link in my bio on Instagram or 5upchurch.org slash give. You can lift your seed now or your phone if you're giving online. I'm going to declare over all of you. I send this anointing now upon every seed. And I declare much fruit to come from this seed. May you experience so much blessing from sowing. May this anointing come upon you powerfully in every area of your life upon your finances. Let this anointing come. Let there be supernatural provision in your life. And whatever the devil planned in your life in the past or the future to try to bring you lack, I cancel those plans and I speak protection over your finances in Jesus' name. Amen.